Change. It's always been a rather scary word for classic WoW fans, since Blizzard originally stated they're going to be recreating this world all the way from the very beginning. At the start of Classic, the community and Blizzard united behind the idea that the game should be released as close as possible to hashtag no changes. We want it to be how it was, all of the cool RPG aspects, the class flavour, the levelling journey, as well as the honour and ranking system without battlegrounds and world buffs. And we got that. Oh boy, did we get that. Moving from TBC and soon enough into Wrath the Lich King, as a once war chief of the Horde would say, Times change. The player base is dramatically different, as is the outlook on the game. Three years ago, suggesting looking for dungeons should be a feature of the game would get you buried in downvotes. Now it's quite a popular opinion. And then even Blizzard themselves recently put up a long post regarding the design pillars for classic moving forwards, officially stating that they will be embracing a hashtag some changes design philosophy and reopening those floodgates anew for the potential good changes and maybe the bad. Today I want to recap 10 of the largest changes that Wrath of the Lich King Classic will have when compared to the original release of the game from 2008. Some of these are completely new features, others are reactions to how the player base has changed, and some are just some nice quality of life additions. So if you played back in Wrath originally, expect things to be a bit different this time around, though I would still say at its core it's very much going to be a Wrath of the Lich King experience through and through. Before we go on, I want to do a quick shout out to a world where they're sick of the usual orcs, elves and dwarves. Let's talk about Hero Wars, a free to play action RPG. Hero Wars has characters to suit every type of player, from cyborgs to aliens, vampires and even druid mains will find something relatable as part of the cast. Some of the cool heroes that you can get are Chabba, he's a tank that literally devours his enemies whole, or Celeste, who can easily swap between a DPS, focus, dark or shadow form and a healer, light form. Sound familiar? at all. Also, the outfits that drop aren't too bad either. Hero Wars stands out in the genre with no equals. You'll find yourself playing when you're traveling, at lectures, or even at the same time as something else. It's super easy to get started, but assembling the perfect team comp is an art in itself. For example, Mojo the Shaman can't heal Dark Star the Elf as efficiently as good Grandma Martha can, while the slow cleaver makes a great pair with the swift Isaac. Hero Wars is a world of six unique modes, more than 300 Guild Wars servers, and 100 million players. You can play alone or see who among you and your friends is the top dog. Oh, and I almost forgot, here's a question for you. Where can you get 30,000 coins, 600 emeralds and 5 awesome heroes to start dominating in Hero Wars right away? Who slow? The answer is in the link in the description below. Join the game now and get a super chest with 5 top heroes, one of them is secret, as well as 600 emeralds and 30,000 gold. Scan this QR code or download the game below from the video description. Many thanks to Hero Wars for the sponsor, let's talk WoW. Let's start off with some cool additions to your character's customization. One feature of Wrath the Lich King that's very well known by everybody is that the barbershop will become available so that you can update your character's look. Now the original Wrath barbershop was, um, I mean it was a barbershop in quite a literal sense in that you would be able to change things you would expect there, such as your hair colour, your hair style, horns on Tauren or Draenei, markings on Night Elves, and so on. But Wrath Classic, we will have an updated barbershop with loads more options than this. In this new barber shop, you can modify those things we just went over, in addition to your character's face, any piercings or other accessories that they have, and largest of all, your gender. Originally in Wrath, you had to pay real money in order to change from a male to a female character or vice versa. In Wrath, it's going to be a small fee in game instead. Blizzard originally removed gender change from the shop alongside the release of Shadowlands, so I am not at all surprised that this change finds its way back to Wrath. And hey, it's free stuff. Imagine having to pay actual money to do this. Next major change is significant alterations to how the battle for Winter Grasp will function. Though as of when I'm writing this video, it's currently in the beta stage and it may very well be that things change in the future and I'll update as much as I can on it. Anyways, in original Wrath, Winter Grasp was a super fun, frequent activity to take part in. A correct version of Winter Grasp as per the final patch of the game would have had it been an up to 120 versus 120 open world PvP 
zone. You could queue via Battleground Masters or be active in the zone. Every three hours a battle would then commence, consisting of that server, i.e. just that server's Horde and Alliance population. The winning side would gain access to additional farming spots, Stonekeeper shard vendors for gear, enchants and more, and most importantly, the raid, Vault of Archivon. In Wrath Classic, here's how it's going to be now. Essentially, it'll be a battleground where you are either active in the zone when the battle begins or you can queue from Dalaran. As far as I understand it, the new Winter Grasp will be 40 versus 40 and cross server. Again, just imagine it like any other battleground. If anyone on your faction and server is part of a winning Winter Grasp team, your entire faction will gain a buff called Essence of Wintergrass, which will allow access to the aforementioned rewards, including Vault of Archivon. This means for Wrath Wintergrass, but there's a very strong possibility that both factions will be able to access Vault of Archivon at the same time. Again, we've yet to see this function on the beta, but I'll update below if anything changes from what I expect it to be. So, what's the deal here? Why did Blizzard do this? Well, in short, faction balance across the majority of servers on Classic is not very good. Cross server is more or less going to be required for Winter Grasp to actually somewhat resemble how it would have been back in original Wrath. If they kept it same server only, there just wouldn't have been any meaningful battles for Winter Grasp throughout the entirety of Wrath for the majority of servers. It does seem like quite a drastic change, but I believe it's the correct call given the state of servers and it should lead you to having much more engaging games of Winter Grasp. Next up, and I suppose it kind of goes without saying that Wrath of the Lich King but like every single other version of Classic so far, will begin on the final content patch of the expansion, that will be 3.3.5. And for Wrath, that's going to mean so many things will be completely different from how you would remember them being originally. You know how crazy overpowered Death Knights or Retribution Paladins were on launch? Yeah, they've been toned down now quite a bit. I'm not saying they're bad by any stretch of the imagination, they just aren't. I'm going to completely destroy you whilst being in some level 70 something quest screens overpowered anymore, and I think that's okay. Compared to TBC and definitely classic, I'd say overall the class balance is also way way improved on the final patch, and the difference between the lower performing specializations and the top ones is not completely night and day. One warrior back in classic with well buffs could probably out DPS 4 Moonkins with the same buffs, and the warrior wouldn't go um either. Also, despite last patch balance, I think Wrath will see more class development and power shifts between who is the top dog on the DPS meters over the course of the expansion. For example, we expect classes such as Fire Mages or Fury Warriors to begin the expansion very slowly and not be very relevant on the damage meters, but by Ice Crown Citadel with good gear, they're known to be absolute top performers. Perhaps Wrath Classic will see a good bit of flavor of the patch rerolling, is that what we should call it now than any other iteration of classic that's come before it and i think that's something to be excited about speaking of pve though expect a few changes on that front as well so in original wrath blizzard well they missed the mark a little bit when it came to difficulty wrath of the lich king heroics were a joke when compared to how difficult they've been in tbc and tier 7 was just far too watered down and under tuned in fact revamp nax either turn t and soth emune to lair were cleared within two days of expansion launch. This has never been repeated in any expansion ever. It was just way too easy. With the benefit of hindsight this time around, Blizzard are changing these experiences just a little bit. First up, Blizzard want to not only buff heroic dungeons, but also explore avenues to keep the content relevant beyond getting badges throughout the expansion. In a quote from a recent blue post here, they say, we're exploring plans to add challenges to heroic dungeons as the expansion proceeds, which would also provide valuable rewards. Nothing else is known at this point and these changes shouldn't take away from heroics being a good source of badges, but this is a space to watch what happens. As for tier 7, here's a few more comments from the blue post. Our 2008 design intentions was for it to be a little easier than the 2006 original, but we missed the mark and it ended up being much easier than we intended. Bringing up the difficulty a bit will make it a more fun and interesting challenge while awaiting the opening of Ulduar. So what this has translated to so far is that tier 7 
7 content has been buffed in health and damage by 30%. Well, that's what it is on the beta at the moment. And in case you're wondering, no, it's still not difficult. And that's okay. In Wrath, we have hard modes and heroics eventually to look forward to. Not every raid has to be difficult. And Phase 1 is a nice time to sort out your professions or your alts and so on. So I'm okay with this. The only effect it may have is making that leeway for getting immortal or undying a bit more difficult. Next up, you may remember in original Wrath of the Lich King, in order to create a Death Knight, you already had to have an existing character at level 55 or above on your account. This is changing for Wrath Classic. They confirmed the following in a blue post. Your first Death Knight created on any realm is free of restrictions. Any Death Knight created after your first one must be on a different realm and require an existing level 55 character on the same realm, and you may only have one DK per realm. So new or returning players, I think this is pretty amazing news. You can hop straight in and make your Death Knight at level 55 instantly. And on top of this, we're going to be getting access to DKs in the pre-patch. Originally in Wrath, they didn't get them to launch. The date of the pre-patch is still to be determined as of doing this video, probably late August. Reminder, release date is September 26th. On top of this, Classic World of Warcraft currently has a global 50% bonus XP buff to all activities which is active right now and will persist to the launch of Wrath Classic. All in all, this is a great time for DK fans who missed out on Classic so far, or just for leveling in general, so make the most of it. Next up, fresh servers. Okay, so back in 2008, there were fresh servers as well. This isn't particularly new to Wrath or a change, but I want to mention it because the reason for fresh existing now is so different compared to what it was back in 2008. Then you had fresh because, wow, this game is so popular, the player base numbers keep going up and the only cross server tech was for battlegrounds they just needed more space to put all of these players these days fresh is more for people who feel really far behind the curve it's for the people who want that new server equal footing feel or just to experience the launch day rush who knows how long it's going to last for this time around but fresh is always good for some fun at least for a while it's also worth a mention that fresh will have the 50 percent xp buff too and will release alongside the pre-patch so keep your eyes out for information on that and you should drop fairly soon. I had to update this part of the video after a blue post quite literally today but Blizzard have finally decided that in fact there will be paid faction changes in Wrath of the Lich King Classic. They say we're convinced by the argument that being able to play with your friends is more important and that you should be able to bring your accomplishments with you when you do. This turns out to be the same trade-off provided by transferring between realms which is already available as a paid service though it makes sense to make the same decision with respect respect to race and faction change. Until today they have maintained that there would be no faction change services in the shop, but now there will be. They also go on to say they're working on adding race and faction change as a paid service in a future patch, which isn't ideal because kind of obviously this service is going to get the most value during the pre-patch and launch by a long way. So though it's coming eventually, not quite when you'd hope for it, keep your eyes out for news. Another good bit of news is that emblems will drop from all raid content at the launch of the game. Blizzard say both 10 player and 25 player raids will drop emblems of valor at launch, whilst dungeons will drop emblems of heroism. This is overall a bit of a simplification of Wrath's emblem system to where hopefully there will be less currencies overall to get through. Next up, and again this is a bit of a it's working like this on the beta at the moment, I'm not entirely sure how it's going to look at launch one, but that is that 10 and 25 man content is currently sharing a lockout from the start of the expansion. Currently in the beta you can only run 10 or 25 man content once per week. This is an idea that's been taken from how the ICC raid format works where you can only run each raid size once per week on one difficulty. This was to stop behaviour that manifested itself in Trial of the Crusader where raiders would regularly run the instance four times per week for badges and loot. However this system makes sense in ICC and Trial of the Crusader because heroics exist. In Nax and Alduar they don't don't exist. You've only got 10 man and 25 man. We have an update to go through on this as well, the day the video was supposed to go out. I thought to leave this point out and come up with something else, but it's been the first time Blizzard has mentioned this change of mind, and in my opinion, it's good news. So here's what they say. We've decided that lockout should be shared between heroic and normal versions of the raid, but not between 10 and 25 player versions of the raid. You'll be able to do both the 10 man player and 25 player versions of each raid every lockout period, but we'll have to 
choose between normal and heroic for raids that offer that choice. So in short, you can run tier 7, that's Nax and so on, and tier 8, that's Alduar and both 10 and 25 man each week, but you cannot run Trial of the Crusader and ICC four times per week on both 10 man normal heroic, 25 normal and 25 heroic. You for example could do 10 man normal, but then you can't do 10 heroic, and you could do 25 man heroic, which means you can't do 25 man normal. On a separate note, they mention that the Trial of the Crusader trinkets will now become unique equipped. They say, we also plan to make any trinkets with both normal and heroic versions, such as Death's Verdict, good example, share a unique equip category so that you can't have both versions of the same trinket equipped at the same time. Now, if you go and look at Old Wrath the Lich King Basilis, a ton of them contain double Trial of the Crusader trinkets because they are so powerful. This was fixed in the next tier of ICC, whereas they mention here, trinkets gain a unique equip between difficulties. It looks like they're porting this decision back to Trial of the Crusader, so our Bissalists are going to be getting a bit of an update. And finally, you didn't think I'd forget it right. For somebody out there, this will be the first time that they hear about this, so brace yourself. Wrath of the Lich King Classic will not have the looking for dungeon feature that was in the original one. Why? The short version is unless something literally has to be cross-server for it to work, i.e. Winter Grasp, they're just not going to make it cross-server because they want to protect social interactions within the game and not have people mixing with environments from different servers. Does this suck for leveling? You bet it does. Does this mean people are going to cherry pick classes that they don't share loot within dungeons or that can do the most AoE? Yes, 100%. And that's how things are going to be. Instead of the LFD tool, we have a modified version of the looking for more tool from retail, which is what people mainly use to put together pog raids for normal or heroics or search for groups for Mythic Plus. Again, it's currently in its beta stage, as are many of the changes that I've gone over here. And I expect it to change a little bit more before the release of the expansion. There are a bunch more things which I could go over, but I think those are 10 fairly solid changes to get you started and give you an impression of how Blizzard are intending to do things a little bit differently this time around. I could definitely do a follow up on this video. If there's anything big you think I missed off that you'd like to see, do drop it down below and share your thoughts on Blizzard's changes so far. Do you think they're doing a good job with these changes or should have we just stuck to no changes and this isn't worth the effort? In any event, thank you all so much for watching and listening in and I'll see you all in the next one very soon.